a custom HO scale building kit and a new year. Welcome back to ABR Model Works YouTube channel and a new year for 2022. This video is an overview of the build process for a custom kit for Dubai trains. Plus a little bit of news on what we've been up to, what we're going to be doing and some new products we've just released. Bart from Dubai Trains reached out to see if we could build some custom kits for his new layout. So his first kit had some neat design concepts in it and I thought it would be a great little project to show you the flexibility of the modular model building system. Plus as Bart's going to do a build video on this it would give you an insight into how other modelers work with our products. But before we get into the build process let's just go through a few little news items. So first up I've just added 125 new 3D printed scenic detail items that you can buy individually or in bulk and save up to 40%. Check them out on our website. In addition to that, we've also released 30 box sets of 3D scenic detail parts. The box sets either contain a range of different items or a volume of one item. Box sets are going to be available in some of the retail stores so keep an eye out for those as well. And next I'm currently rewriting the design system to make it easier for you to design your buildings using the modular building system. This has come about and I have to thank Bart for this as well as some of the things that we've both talked about in his projects that are coming forward. So you'll see some videos starting to appear around the whole design and build process of the modular model building system over the coming weeks and months. And lastly, stick around to the end because I've got a giveaway that I'd like to share with you. Now Bart needs a background building of a Bury warehouse that has a internal loading dock. So this is not a straightforward background building because it's going to be built on an angle. But this will be quite an interesting little build so I'm looking forward to seeing his video. As part of the project we're also introduced some new panels. Some 1.5 storey high panels and the loading dock doors and, and parts to go with them. So a little bit of background on Dubai trains and Bart. As the name gives away he lives in Dubai and Bart designs model railways. So check out his channel it's got some interesting design concepts. The designs Bart produces for his clients have some great ideas on how to produce a working model railway. I really look forward to seeing what he does with our kit. A link to Dubai Trains YouTube channel is in the description below. Okay so this is a mock-up of the building. It is one and a half stories tall for the loading bay area and three stories above that for the rest of the building. So a four and a half story tall building. It has three panels on the front face, one panel on one end and one and a half panels on the other end which makes it sit on an angle when you put it up against the background. So I'll show you a bit more about how we're doing that um, as we go through the build process. So as you can see this is going to be a neat little building. Okay, so here we have all of the panels laid out. This is something I suggest that you do whenever you start the building process, mainly to familiarize yourself where everything goes. So along the bottom are our one and a half story panels, and on top of that are the three story combinations. So this end wall has a three story two opening panel. The next panel in the building is a three story two opening as well on top. The middle panel on the building has a two-storey two opening and a one-storey four panel opening. The next panel again is the same as the first two, so one and a half storey at the bottom, three storey above that. The end wall has one and a half storey panels at the bottom and a three storey four opening panel above it and it will have a half panel so where the ruler is that's hiding the other half that comes on the on the panel sheet but it's a one and a half storey on the bottom and a three storey above that. 
Here we have what is going to be used to produce our floors. Now Bart has chosen to use our planked flooring system for the internal floors and the concrete for the loading bay area at the bottom floor and for the roof section. Now in addition to the outside walls this building has an internal wall for the loading bay and these are the three panels that will be turned into that loading bay wall. So let's have a close-up look at the mock-up building. This is not exactly how the finished building will be because we've been playing around with design concept ideas but it gives you the idea of what we're going to achieve. So as I said earlier it has a one panel opening on the left hand face and a one and a half width panel on the right hand end and three panels across the face. We have our one and a half story full opening loading dock door areas that we're using to support the building and we're using the one and a half story platform height uh, loading dock doors for the internal wall. We've also produced a new quarter width uh, platform uh, for the loading dock. The building is designed to go up against a background and so the back part of the building is completely open. And one of the suggestions that Bart made, which I think is really cool, is that in fact this could be a foreground building and you could put a piece of perspex over that and have loads of detail inside on the floor. So that would make a very interesting um, scene to look through at your railway. So for those that are new to the channel and for everybody else, here's a little recap on the panel system. When you get a panel, it has a supporting frame much like this and you pop the panel itself out and you end up with a, um, a panel that looks like that. And this example, I'm using a two-story, two-opening panel. So in this section here, the large opening would be a window or a brick panel, so you get a choice. And our panel kits come with both windows and the brick inserts. And this bottom section is, uh, is designed to have a brick insert placed in it. If you wanted it to be concrete, you would simply leave the piece that you popped out from here and turn it around and glue it back in place. The panel comes with some spaces. This is this bottom section. The very bottom one is to support the floor at the bottom of a building. The middle ones, the five mil high ones, are designed to support floors and the top one is for the roof support. Now whether you're building one of our kits or you've ordered uh, a bunch of panel packs to make your own kit or you've ordered just the individual items as a custom kit, the processes that we're going to be talking about are pretty much the same all the way through. Included in the kits are a bunch of 3D parts. The panel packs come in one panel per pack, four panels per pack and eight panels per pack. They include windows and brick inserts if that's required for the panel. And if you're custom building, then of course you're ordering all of the parts individually. We have a range of 3D model parts in packs that you can order the pack um, and the quantity of each of the items that come in it. Or you can individually order um, and in bulk and save up to 40% um, individual 3D parts. So we're trying to make the system as flexible as we can to cover as many bases as we can so that you can design and build whatever it is that you're looking for. Once you've identified all your parts, the first step in this system as far as the build process is concerned is that you need to sand all of the panels and inserts to remove any debris left over from the laser cutting process. I like to use a 3M 320 grit sanding block. Um, I find that does a really nice job. You're not trying to sand it back too much, you're just getting it so it's nice and smooth. This does three things. First of all, it removes the debris as I said. Second of all, it uh, prepares the surface for sealing and aids the sealer bonding to the timber and which gives you a nice smooth finish. The brick inserts and the roller doors, they need to be sanded so that they're 
again so that the paint will stick but with the brick inserts it's important that the sanding process is done so that when you apply model light as the mortar in the brick joints it won't dissolve the glue from the MDF and end up with a very uh, ugly muddy looking look. The sanding and the sealing process that we're going to do next is critical in the build process. Now as far as the sealing is concerned I'm going to be using Deluxe Materials Sand and Seal. I've fallen in love with Deluxe Materials products. I've had a really great run with them and they do a great job. And one of the cool bits is a little bit of uh, background is that the guys who produce these products are modelers just like you and I. So take your 3M block, give each of the panels a sand on both sides, particularly the brick panels and roller doors, etc. And uh, you'll end up with a nice looking model. The next step is to remove the panels from their holding frame and then sand the tab areas to remove the little holding sprues that uh, held them in the frame itself. Now once you've sanded the uh, holding tab areas you want to test fit all of the panels to make sure that they slot together neatly. Now I'm using some panels here that I use for you know playing around so these aren't the actual panels for the building but you get the idea. The holding tabs just simply slot together and by sanding these little pieces back makes the joint go together nicely. There's also sanding needed in the top section so the, each one of these openings has a tab at the top, the bottom and a couple in the middle. So sand those back, test fit them, get all your wall laid out with everything test fitted together before you do anything else. Now when you've done that you'll then sand the openings. So again, there's little sprue joints in the openings to hold those pieces in when they're in the frame. And you sand the 3D printed windows and parts that you're fitting to a panel, as well as the uh, various brick inserts that go in, etc. And so we sand them all, make them have just a very uh, soft friction fit so that they'll sit in place so that you can make sure that everything's gone together the way it's going to. Lay things out so that you know what item came out of what hole because you're sanding it and some items are going to be slightly different in size. So sand them all, test fit everything and lay them out and that gets the that step then out of the way. So next we're going to be gluing the panels together to form a complete wall but not joining the corners of the walls together just producing the wall itself. Now the system is designed so that you can mix and match different panels together to get different looks. As an example we've got our one and a half story opening at the bottom and above this one in the center we've got this four opening single story panel and above it we have a two story two opening panel. So we've got you know that type of look going on above it in these areas. So this way each building that you make even though you're using the same uh, items can have a very very different look and feel for a different type of industry etc. We're going to now look at putting them together. In this instance we have our three um, openings at the bottom and they're those three panels there. So just assume for a moment that they were popped out and these panels represent those particular ones. Okay so the way I like to work is I like to do my gluing of panels together on a uh, flat piece of galvanized iron and the reason for that is that I can then put a steel ruler down with a couple of magnets and form a straight edge so that as I'm building my building I'm getting the base completely square in the first place and, and in line. I think this is a really really good way of working. Now when you're gluing the panels together what you need to do is you need to roll it over and glue them together with the front face down and the reason for that is that sheets of MDF all vary slightly in thickness. And so if there's a small step on the inside of the building, you're not going to notice it. Now for the most part, you'll get the panels and you put them together like these ones. They'll be virtually perfectly flat across the surface. But every now and again, we'll get a sheet of material that, have, that will have a slightly different thickness. So putting it together this way gets you this nice, beautiful, flat front face, which is the most important thing. Now I will start by putting one end down and then I like to use these little bottles to uh, put the glue on and the glue I prefer to use 
is the Deluxe Materials Speed one. It's a PVA glue. It dries really fast. It has a very fast grip, um, about five minutes. Sorry, you can remove them from the bench and go on gluing the next bit. And I like to work quite quickly. So the way I do it is I take my bottle and put a little bead of glue along the top edge, which is the inside edge of the face that's being glued together. Slide them together and then I get a couple of magnets and uh, hold them in place and keep working along the wall as I go. Um, now in this instance the panels that we would have glued here would have been these three opening panels. Once you've got these three panels glued together you would then take the panels that are going on top and, uh, and glue those in place by stacking them on, uh, on the top, gluing them on the butt joint and making up the rest of the wall. So then you've got this whole wall finished. You do the same with the ends and again you're test fitting the ends to make sure that they fit together. So that's the basics of building up the wall. Once we've got our walls put together and, uh, and the glue is dry, um, I then very carefully hold it and just give it a very light sand just to make sure that we're, we're removing any high spots that the glue might produce. And we do that on all three walls. Sorry, we actually do that on all four walls because at this stage you would be producing the internal wall as well, joining those three parts together. But the important part on the internal wall on this building is that the end tabs, you don't knock those out because you, the wall is going to be butt jointed in here. We will be trimming the length of it back and I'll cover that in a little bit more detail um, shortly. But for the moment, you make sure that you leave them there. Now, if you do break them out, you can always glue them back in. At this point, the main objective exercise is just to make sure that the wall is flat, be rolled over, sand back any high spots, do the same on this side. Okay, so next we're going to put in our floor spaces. And I've turned it around, put on a bit of an angle so that it's easier for you to see exactly what I'm doing. I have my front face and I've actually got a end wall butted up against it and I'm holding it in place with a couple of metal uh, blocks. These blocks are just some material that I had cut working on a steel bench top. This works really, really well to hold things in place. So whether I'm using magnets or these weights, these are very, very handy and I find the process works really well. Now, the reason why we want this end wall there is, is that because the wall, a thickness of about three mil or an eight, the spacer needs to be glued so that there is a step at the end of it. We've made these spaces so that they have little cuts on the end that you break off depending on where they end up. So to start with, we would use the spacer complete and we would put the spacer level with the bottom. This is for the bottom floor spacer and you'll see that the end of it goes over the joint line. That's also going to add some strength at that point. Then you would continue across gluing your spaces on, but when you get to the other end, you'll see now that we are too wide. And so to solve that problem, you'll take the small end off, and so that when it glues on, the it lines up with the indented end of the panel. Now this is very important that you get this square at the bottom because your floor needs to be able to sit in like that and line up with the opening. So that's basically how that goes together. I'll just lean that back a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So it lines up with the bottom opening. Now when you've glued the bottom one on, when you look at the panel, we have a thinner version of the same thing and we take the thinner ones and we do the same thing but the difference with the thinner one is that you glue that in place level with the top of the opening sit across and you just lay those over doing exactly the same thing and you repeat that process for each level of your building now when you get to the top again it's the same the same process except now we're going to use the wide one and the wide one goes again like so and then that gives you the roof with that type of spacing so that's it we now put the spaces for the floors making sure just recapping making sure that the bottom spacer lines up nicely with the bottom of the panel 
the floor spaces lines up with the top opening at the bottom giving you a gap to put your floor above it so it, again it becomes level and you work your way out the building doing that and the top spacer again goes across like so. Now with the floor supports that uh, you've now glued on to the front face if the building had four faces the front and back faces would be the same in terms of how you do the floor supports. The side supports are a little different and the reason for that is that because the floor supports have now built up this extra piece of material that, in, that has added thickness to the internal side you instead of breaking away the short piece that uh, we will that we would break away to go on the bottom and uh, middle and top floors so that it lines up with the end we need to break away the larger end and in that way when the floor supports are added the tops of them line up with the indented area on the tab so it's the same whether it's the floor supports or the bottom or top uh, we need to break away the um, the larger one we need to break away the larger one now where the tab is extruding you'll end up with a step but they are level so that way when you put a panel on the side it is recessed in now the floor supports for the internal wall because this building is an angled building we don't add them until the internal wall has been added to the building and we've cut the floor so we can see up and how far across they go which you'll need then to um, cut them shorter so it doesn't protrude and make the building step away from the wall when you push it up against a flat wall Okay, so we've now glued all of the supports for the floors in place on all th three walls. Ah, so the next thing is that we'll now paint on whatever you choose to use as a sander sealer. If you don't use this particular product, a, another way of working which I've used quite a bit is a 50-50 mixture of PVA and water. And you just paint on a couple of, of uh, coats uh, with a light sand between each coat feeling the surface to make sure that you've got a nice smooth surface and you do that to all of the parts with the exception of floor pieces if you're using the wooden floor if it's concrete you do it with the concrete with the wooden floor you want to stain it to the color of the planking that you want to have whether that's you know a dark grimy color or whatever but you want to stain it first and then it's up to you whether you seal it or not because the sealing is really going on to help the painting process but if you are staining again make sure that you've pre-sanded and then uh, stain it and you may do a little bit of sanding between each coat of the stain itself if the underneath side is going to be seen and you intend to paint that then seal it but if it's not going to be seen the uh, the only reason why you would probably want to um, seal it is to uh, stop moisture getting into it so it's still not a bad idea to seal it as well uh, with whatever sealer that you're using if it's a stained surface and you want to put the sealer on afterwards to protect it and stop moisture getting in then I would do a test of staining and sealing to make sure that the sealer doesn't change the color of the stain on you or make it silly shiny or something like that okay so seal sand and seal both sides and everywhere where paint is going to go especially if it's going to be seen now while your panels are drying up with the sealing process the next step that i like to do at this stage is start to work on the 3d parts so Okay, so now for the 3D parts, I like to glue my parts to a skewer for airbrushing. And uh, this makes the process of, of airbrushing really easy because you can just rotate the part, uh, whether you're doing the priming or the finishing coats. I also like to use the modeler's rack to stack them in. And typically what I will do is I'll sort all my parts out, first of all, into the primer color that I'm going to use and put the parts in different racks. And then once I've done that, I'll do all the priming as a batch of, say, the... Uh, you know the, the brown the black and the gray or whatever other color that I use and then when I've gone through doing all the priming I'll then resort them because sometimes I might be using similar colors so that I'm working from a light color to a dark color as far as the painting is concerned and then I'll, I'll uh, go through and paint them I try to set things up as much as I possibly can in a little sort of production line type process 
the first step um, of painting is also to uh, put on a primer depending on uh, the uh, size of the wall and, uh, and what you're going to be doing as a finish. Um, I'll either airbrush on again the Vallejo surface primers um, or I might use uh, the Vallejo rattle can paints to uh, do the priming part of the process. The airbrush that I have now fallen in love with is the uh, Harder and Stenbeck um, airbrush. This one is the Evolution 2-in-1. It has a 0.2mm uh, nozzle and a 0.4mm. Uh, With the brick inserts, any type of brick insert. Also we needed to do the sander sealer on those. Once that has dried you then give it a paint. I have mixed up my own brew of a, a version of the Vallejo German Red and uh, with some desert sand and some grey. Uh, there'll be a video on painting brickwork and finishing brickwork. So if you want to do any painting of individual brick colours um, as I did on this particular kit you do that at this stage. But the most important important part of this process is before you put the um, material in that's going to be the mortar joint you must allow a good 24 hours the paint on the brickwork to dry. If you don't do that you'll end up like I said earlier with this sort of really muddy horrible finish and it just won't look nice. Get the painting of the uh, panels out the way, give them their final coats of, uh, of colour. Um, don't worry about weathering or anything at this stage so that they're ready to go. Now we are going to have to go back and paint some areas of the walls because we're going to be adding pilasters etc but when we glue the walls together um, it's good to have the bulk of it already painted up and then that way you're only needing to focus on painting the uh, pilaster areas themselves. Okay so the next step in the process is we're going to glue the end walls to our front wall and in this particular build what I will do is I'll use the first floor um, section as a support to make sure that everything is square. I'll also use the uh, the top floor to do the same thing and what you do is um, I would probably take a couple of you know weights or magnets just to hold the front face down. Um, like I did with the panels I get my glue and put a small amount along the joints push them together making sure that they're that they are in nice and square and that there's no parts protruding etc and then once you've got the wall together set up the floor but no, don't glue it in at this stage sit the floor there put the do the same with the wall on the other end put some weights or magnets to make sure everything is held together nice and tight and then let that dry up then once it's dry and you're happy with it check to make sure that the corner joints have in fact gone together nicely and you have good lined up corners because the pilasters are going to need to sit on that and if they are protruding you're either going to need to sand them back trim them or worst case scenario you might need to pop it apart and re-glue it so just be careful at this stage you do need to get quite nice corner joints if you want the building to look good when you're happy with that then glue this floor the first floor into the structure and by doing that you then will have made these three walls all tied together and nice and strong so our next step is to trim up the, the material the sections for these floors so as it is a, an angled uh, building the floor and roof sections of course come in um, you know rectangles or squares that's going to need to be cut what we do is take our floor or roof and we slide it into the area where it's going to sit so it's sitting on top of its supports and we very carefully with a nice sharp pencil mark where we where the cut needs to be then when we've done that with a steel ruler and a razor saw just very gently using the tip of the razor saw just run backwards and forward all the way along cutting into the MDF um, about a millimeter or a sixteenth so you're not cutting all the way through at this stage you're producing a nice straight cut line that's going to guide the saw. When you're at that stage then place the material on top of something that gives you a, uh, an air gap that you can cut through on or the 
uh, perhaps the you know the edge of your bench um, wherever and then finish the job cutting through so the saw is on an angle like about that and the reason for this is that the the blade itself will aid in the process of keeping you cutting nice and straight so it's just nice gentle strokes not trying to apply too much force the material is quite soft the razor saw will go through it quite quickly it's a fairly easy job to do the only critical part about it is, is sliding the floor in making sure that it's in nice and that you mark the line uh, either end where you're going to be cutting it so when you've done these three and uh, and you've cut that away this waste area gives you the piece that you need for here and at the bottom and do the same process that you did for the floors push the panel into this section mark it and uh, and cut it away Okay, so the next part is that we're going to now fit the internal wall. Now, when you glued them together, you would have glued them together without, without taking out the tab inserts for the ends of the wall. And when you look at a panel, you'll see that there is a deep engraving line um, about a sixteenth of a millimetre in from the end. That's uh, there so that if you're not using pilasters and you want to have an engraving line at the joint, you can do. The other line is actually where the card pilaster sits on the building. It lines up to, uh, to help you line up your, your pilasters, etc. So what we're going to need to do is take about one and a half mil, a sixteenth ish off either end of this wall with the razor saw. The same way as we did with the other, you'll just simply um, line it up. Now, before you do that, what you want to do is you've got this floor in place. You want to take your ruler and just as accurately as you possibly can measure what that distance is between the two walls. Checking that the where those lines are on this uh, is the same distance. If it's not, then adjust the the, uh, the cutting process. Take one end, and I suggest it would be this end, and cut that away first. If the wall is slightly one way or the other, because it's internal, you really won't notice it. The more more important part is that you line up and get a nice square cut. So we cut one end of it. Then you can slide the wall in, and you can see exactly how much you need to trim off the other end. Trim that away and then once you've done that then of course you can then glue that wall in up against this floor making sure that we are lining the bottom of it up against the edge of that wall. Now we've got that done we take the leftover from the uh, floors and uh, roof and we do the same thing. We place it in, we mark it and we cut it to get these two angled pieces and we glue those in place. The next step is to add the pilaster. Now, a lot of the buildings are going to be uh, one height. In other words, they'll be you know, the same size um, spacing between the floors. Like this is a three-story pilaster set. So three, four, two, whatever. You'll just be using the one. But in this case, we have a one and a half floor and a three-story floor above it. So like with uh, working with the panels, we'll take the top section off the one and a half and the bottom section off the three so that when they go together you'll end up with the right size pilaster for the building. The pilasters simply glue onto the face. There are uh, these uh, lines like there to help you line your pilaster up. With the pilasters they come in various sizes so that you've got a few options so that you can put a 5mm pilaster like this and then you can put a thinner pilaster on top if you want to make it you know a little bit more fancy a um, bit like the old um, art deco days um, where they had steps so you've got some choices with that. With the corner section you use your 5mm pilaster so that it overhangs the end of the building and the 4mm pilaster on the back side. So this is the uh, you know the clean face side and you put them together that way. You end up with this little line but we'll fix that in a moment. So you glue those on like so. The same with the other sections and, and then you end up with it at, at this stage. 
Now with the roof area, if you want, we supply these sections in the pilasters that allow you to have, you know, these corner components and uh, the straight sections to, um, to have the uh, roof section step over the top of the pilaster. So you've got a nice little stepped uh, piece of trim at the top of the building all the way around. Once you've then got the top wall trim on and the pilasters in place, the next part of the process is to fill any gaps etc and again I use uh, model light to do that the key reason why I use model light this product was designed for the model aircraft hobby and it's designed to go on balsa so it sands really well some of the other fillers that you can get at your local hardware store are designed for you know materials that are a little bit harder and you start sanding the cardboard before you stand the uh, the filler so this actually works really well combine that with a bit of sander sealer or um, you know foam armor or whatever to, to uh, smooth it off um, it comes up a treat. So we apply um, some of the model light along the edge in the corners and at the tops where they meet and then again just very lightly sand them back and you may need to do that a couple of times where the uh, pilasters have the little joints for uh, as the as a decorative section again you can use your razor saw just to clean out those little areas and then when you've done that you end up with you know your pilasters looking like they're supposed to be there with the right sort of you know gaps lining up etc looks good you know it comes together quite nice like we've done here with michael's freight depot so that's uh, how you do the pilasters So next we're going to add the uh, internal loading dock platform. Uh, so since building Michael's Freight Depot for a couple of different projects, I've added two new platform widths, um, a half width and a quarter width. And for this particular build, it's the quarter width. Now, at the point when you did the painting, etc., for the brick inserts, you would have done the same for the various parts for this. And what you do is take the same approach. You'll glue the four pieces together to make the base up, and then you'll attach the, the deck on top. The difference in this instance is because the, the standard platform is designed to go like so. So it's the same width as the distance between each of the panels. But we're now having to reduce this width slightly. The approach that I suggest you take is that when you've got the base sections done, you glue the two N ones in place against the face of the wall sliding the two end ones towards the end and then position the center one in the middle. Now this again being a mock-up and I was just doing it quickly, I, to be honest with you it did a lousy job. As you can see I haven't spaced them equally. But space them equally. Then when you've done that you'll need to sand off each end of the uh, platforms uh, about um, not quite a millimeter uh, so I would measure the distance again measure the length of, of these by putting uh, the three of them the three of the tops you know end to end measure that distance work out what the difference is in the length and then divide it by six six being each end take the first two ends sand those down by that amount that should then leave the middle one being too wide glue the two end ones in place um, and then sand a little bit off the end of the middle one going backwards and forwards until it fits in nicely once you've done that then glue it in place and that part of the process is finished now if you've got like we're doing with this building we've got a concrete floor at this stage now just to disguise this uh, joint I would take some model light and just with my finger very carefully rub it into the that area and then sand it back so that it even though it's painted sand it back so it sort of lines up and it's nice and smooth with your razor saw just just you know, cut away those to get the gap right. Do that until you're happy with it, and then touch it up, touch up the paint, etc. Okay, so our building now is uh, fairly complete without all of the uh, windows, uh, etc., in place. And the reason why I haven't put any of the brick panels in for this particular build. Uh, and windows is because we now need to paint the pilasters. 
So that's our next step, is to add a little bit of the um, whatever the sealer is that you've been using to the card. Paint that on very carefully. On the surface, just give them a very, very light rub. Maybe put one or two, three coats of the sander sealer on. Any wood card, when you paint it or wet it with, it, with water, paint the fibres, even if you've sanded it back nice and smooth, the fibres will start to lift up. And so the reason why we want to put a coat on and sand it and put a coat on and sand it is that you're knocking those fibers back to get a nice finished surface um, remembering that you know the scale of the building little things will stand out a lot so just lightly sand the surface don't worry about the edges so much but um, um, give them a little sand get them ready for painting and then once they're sanded and painted and dried what we do now is we'll paint the pilasters you can either mask them off and airbrush them um, or you can hand paint them whichever you feel more comfortable with and when you've completed that process and you've got the painting of the pilasters right then go around the building looking for any other areas that that may have you know a little mistake on or whatever and do all your touch-ups get all of the touch-ups ready done so the, re the building is ready to add the brickwork the windows and then to start to weather it now. Now, with the 3D windows, we supply them with a little piece of, of plastic that's glass, and I use the RC Modeler's uh, Canopy Glue. It's a deluxe materials product to glue my uh, windows in place. Uh, and anything that where the glue is potentially going to be seen at this stage, because the RC Modeler's light dries pretty much crystal clear. Because it's designed to glue those plastic canopies on model aircraft, you don't want to see an ugly glue line so um, if a little bit of the glue when you when you're gluing a, you know, your windows in place sort of squeezes out it will be less noticeable by by doing that the other thing that I do when I'm gluing anything like windows in or or the um, uh, the glass into the window itself or anywhere where glue joints are going to possibly stand out and be ugly afterwards is I always have a skewer on hand so that while the glue is still you know quite wet I can sort of run the skewer along the joint to um, you know remove anything with uh, things like windows and the brick um, on a building like this I will let's uh, pop this one out I will apply the glue usually using a um, a syringe and I'll just put a little bead of glue on the front edge so that, that way when you slide it in you're pushing the glue away and then I'll check the inside or run my finger on the inside or whatever but that's how I glue the uh, windows and, and brick work in and the same for the doors so there you have it we uh, basically now have our building assembled and painted and ready for weathering in some cases when I'm about to do the weathering side of things if I'm spending Especially if I'm spraying across the building some weathering. I want the weathering to be on the um, windows themselves but not on the glass. And so I may, using the friction fit, push those windows in without the glass do my weathering coats, pop the windows back out, glue the glass in, and then slide the glass back into the building. Um, to weather the glass, I tend to very lightly from a distance spray, you know, a, a, a you know a dirty colour or a light grey, or depending on how big, how strong you want the weathering to be, onto the glass and do it on both sides before gluing it into the actual window itself. But I'll be doing uh, as part of the build video processes. Um, more uh, detailed videos on those processes. So, so that's it. We have um, the basic steps covered. I hope I haven't uh, forgotten or left anything out. But uh, this isn't a build video. It's a you know a, a quick overview of the project that uh, Bart is about to undertake. We'll be doing, as far as build videos are concerned, enough detail that you'll be able to design a building like this and uh, and have all of the steps. Um, we'll also be producing a basic steps um, set of instructions that uh, would outline um, what I've just talked about so that uh, that will be available as well if you're doing a custom build yourself. So that's the basic building steps. You can add more weathering and finishing steps along the way if you wish. As I said at the beginning of the video I'll be producing a series of videos 
covering everything from the design of your building right through to building it and weathering and finishing your building and including a bunch of how to's and techniques on how to make the building and turn it into a really cool scene. So I hope this video has been of benefit to you and gives you a good overview of the processes. As I've said several times, we're going to be improving on that process quite a lot in the coming weeks and months. What I'd like to know is what you think of this building and the concepts. It would be great to get some feedback on that. Plus, I'd also like to know what type of buildings you'd like to see us make, either in kit form or in custom build form like this one. So please add some comments in the comment section below. Now, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We'd love to have you as one of our members. But not only subscribe to our YouTube channel, join our newsletter as well. Because in our newsletter, we make all the announcements on new products and things we're about to work on before we do things with the YouTube channel. Plus, as part of our newsletter, you'll be in the draw each month for a hundred US dollar voucher that you can spend on any of our products. What a great way to kick off your modeling this year. So join up now so that you don't miss out on being part of the next draw. I'm Chris, the modeler at ABR Model Works. Have a great day modeling and thanks for watching this video.